Hello again, O oh audience of Spectres, and welcome back to The Great Partition in Europa Universalis 4. I am Paragon Saber, and I'm really running out of quips about saying how none of you are actually going to watch my videos, so uh, we'll just leave it at that. Last time we saw some uh, significant developments, as usual. Probably the main one, in my opinion, being the uh, Austrian conquest of a lot of North Italian land, taking that from Naples, who was dropped off the Great Power list as a result. Colonialism was revealed to have spawned in England, and right now England the only one holding on to that. Let's actually take a glance. Okay, it has spread across the channel, which means uh, England had good enough relations with some people for it to uh, head across. Still going to, of course, take a while to actually get to a lot of nations. In the north, Muscovy did win a war with Novgorod. I think that was last episode. Might have been two episodes ago, but regardless, the city of Novgorod itself in Muscovite hands... And the Republic of Novgorod, not likely to last all that much longer. Over here, Nitra and Poland and Lithuania absolutely curb-stomped Hungary. Nitra taking Pest itself, as well as most of Transylvania and a couple connecting territories. Seeing Hungary's weakness, bunches more people jumped on them, including uh, Bulgaria, which took back Vidin and Skopje and Wallachia, which took back Oltenia and Tirgoviste. Venice also benefiting from those peace deals, getting back Zeta and Lege, and right now looking to take Epirus from the hapless Byzantines. In the Middle East, we've got a war of the heavy hitters going on. Syria and the Mamluks at war with a lot of their hangers on. Those two having the biggest armies, though they do have to be mindful of a Persia, the number one great power Persia, looming right behind them. In North Africa, things have mostly consolidated. Every tag in this region is either Morocco, Tunis, or the Mamluks, or a vassal or ally of Morocco, Tunis, and the Mamluks. Matter of fact, it looks like Morocco and Tunis are at war. We'll have to see how that turns out later on. Other than that, Ming has actually taken back the Mandate of Heaven from former Emperor Yan. Uh, I mean, good for Ming, but... But well, Ming is not strong. <laughs> Ming right now only holding on to apparently six provinces. None of them awful provinces. But, well, we have reverse name Wu, uh, a great power at this point. She and, oh my goodness, Jin is getting utterly eaten. R regardless, uh, I don't think Ming's going to be able to hold on to the mandate really at all. And Bahmanis very well consolidated in central India, Vijayanagar only in North Kanara. Enough of my blabbing, let's go back to the action. Let's see what happened. The, the, this war in uh, Anatolia and the Middle East, definitely, I think, the one that deserves the most attention. Syria has succeeded in sieging down Cairo. The man looks having to go back and deal with that. Right now, things looking good for the Syrians, though... Their allies, Kandar, Mentessa, and Aretna... Mentessa, at the very least, not looking great right now. Uh, their fort in Sugla, sieged down by Saruhan. Though I'm not seeing the White Hand's army anywhere. Can't help but wonder where that is. Karaman, as everybody, involved in this war. And uh, they're having pretty... Well, they're, they're looking pretty bad on the war scale. They're on the, they're on the Mamluk side. Kandar looking untouched as far as uh, their territories. But... Uh, not really seeing their army. I thought I saw it a couple seconds ago, though. Mentessa down here actually sieging down things from the Mamluks. Holding on to them themselves, they might be looking a little greedy. Not sure what their deal is. This is entirely Syria's army. I'm not seeing much from their allies. Where is Saruhan? Sorry. Saruhan, not Syria's ally. Sarohan, the Mamluks ally. Regardless, I'm not seeing their army, and I want to be seeing their army. Uh, up north of the Black Sea, we do have Zaporozhi in control of Crimea. Theodoro doing well, parlaying an alliance with Odiev into some territorial gains last time. But now, Zaporozhi and uh, Valachia... Well, really, it was Odiev that uh, declared this war... Odiev going in trying to conquer Yedison, the estuary, from Zaporozhi, who has been a very stubborn tag. 
Looks like Moldavia involved in this as well. Uh, Moldavia just going for Zaporozhye itself. Good initiative. Regardless, we'll have to see how that plays out. Crimea dealing with some Ostrakhani separatists. Ostrakhan, a tag that existed earlier, knocked out pretty early, but they might come back again. Persia also dealing with some Armenians. Kasim, we saw them at war with the Great Horde, and uh, they did well for themselves, now in control of four provinces. And uh, the Great Horde reduced to one that's about to get eaten by Ryazan. A couple Karamanese provinces occupied by Mentessa, including... Well, sorry, not Karaman itself, though... Uh, <laughs> Mantessa looking uh, a little bit confused as to where to go there, shifting which province they wanted to go to four different times there. They, they just they just don't know. They're not sure. The Mamluks have sieged Cairo back, but appear to be losing a battle at sea to Syria, and uh, that 29 stack, not something the Mamluks can deal with easily. Also notable, the Syrians do have control of Karak, a level 2 mountain fort that is coastal by virtue of this little gulf down here. I think that might be the Gulf of Aqaba. So, uh... Karak, probably one of the tougher forts to siege down in the early game. I would still put my money on Trebizond as being the hardest, though, uh, j just by virtue of when it's owned by Trebizond, it's level 3, it's coastal, and it's mountains. Just a rough combination there. Not seeing Venice's army down here in Byzantium anymore, but Byzantium uh, did have all of its territories occupied, though they did uh, siege down the fort in Dalmatia in the offing. So, actually, Byzantium could win this. What is the war here? The Venetian conquest of Epirus, due to this very slightly shared sea zone between Lege, Zeta, and Epirus. Uh, Venice involved in any other wars? Nope, just Byzantium, Crete, and, uh, that would be where their armies have gone. Crete knocked out of the war, and, uh, Venice and the Knights likely to get their armies off of Crete, and, uh, look at the Byzantines again. In the meantime, though, the Byzantines trying to siege down the fort in Athens. The fort in Athens being a new thing, uh, usually starts with a capital fort, of course, but... Venice having built one there to protect its interests in the Peloponnese. Or just in Greece, the Peloponnese being, of course, these two. Speaking of the Peloponnese, we've got another one of these wars where uh, the north and south of the Peloponnese attempting to fight each other. People have tried to siege down Maria so many times, but you need 9,000 troops. It is required. That would be... Serbia? Serbia, what's your deal? Serbia is still a junior partner of Hungary, and also involved in this war against Bulgaria, Crete, and Epirus. What would that be? Hungary, what have you done? That would be the second Hungarian conquest of Vidin, trying to get some of the land that they lost when everybody dogpiled on them. All I'm saying, Hungary, is you did that to Pornitra earlier, and using a bug at that. <laughs> Moldavia actually winning the uh, rush for Yedison over here. Because they are the ones to actually stick around and siege it down. That said, Odiev still at war with Wallachia. I, I have no clue what to, to say about this. You'd think that that war would be invalidated or something? Theodoro still involved? They're not. Theodoro has been pieced out. Allowed to retain their alliance with Odiev, and also picking up alliances with Ryazan, Trebizond, Circassia. I think I mentioned Trebizond being given both Kaffa and Matrika, Mantrega, though their usual home taken by Kandar earlier, though uh, Persia has seen the carnage, I use that word a lot too, going on over here in the Middle East and has gone after Kandar. Trebizond siege down, Sinope siege down, Kandar are looking to hurt from this. Persia, the number one great power, or er, Rao, damn. <laughs> Austria now the number one great power because institutions take forever to get to Persia. Though Bengal, we have not seen them since the very, very beginning of the game. They are also a great power. Looks like they have taken a big bite, well, Junpur almost doesn't exist anymore. 
And uh, I do believe there was another tag over here. I think that was Garjat that Bengal also eaten. They've uh, taken a while to get strong, but they have gotten strong. Welcome back to the Great Powers list. Wu, no longer a great power, and their name changing to reflect that, I suppose. I, I just I just don't want to think about that. Why why would it say ooh? The winner of the conflict over here looking to be Morocco, considering they took a province off of Mazab, which was, and I do quote, was Tunis's ally. Looks like that uh, alliance also broken in the course of that war. Titieri, one of the other provinces taken by Morocco in that war. I think Tunis owned that directly, but uh, I'm not sure. Looks like the war between Syria and the Mamluks is over. Syria settling for just taking Nablus. Because they are dealing with Persia. They are attempting to help out... Actually, no. Persia just went for Baghdad. Deciding that uh, Syria had grown too strong in the region. And looking to take out one of its three main uh, cities. Syria putting up a good fight. They do still have this 29 stack with a 252 versus Persia's 33 stack with a 2221. Though, should Persia allow, or sorry, should Syria allow them to sit on Baghdad too long, that'll be the war goal in their hands. Syria deciding that's trying to siege down the coastal fort of Khuzestan. A better idea. Did also see a conquest going on over here. Not anymore. That conquest has ended. Uh, Mentessa and Karaman had come to blows in some manner, but uh, not sure in what manner that would actually be. Venice now with 23,000 men, or rather, 17 of their own men and 6 from the knights, attempting to siege down Constantinople. Constantinople at 50%. Now would be the time for Byzantium to get out of this war. They have Dalmatia siege down. They have Athens sieg sieged down. But if they lose Constantinople, which they have, that war's just going to turn around again. Yeah, at negative 65% because of the loss of their capital, whereas I I'm guessing that war score might have been positive before. Venice taking Epirus and Thessaly in the peace deal, definitely becoming a power in this rather shattered region. Byzantium left with Castoria and Constantinople. Really, it's just been a trauma conga line for them ever since they lost that war against the Balix and lost Anatolia. In the French area, Gascony still content to sit under Nevers, but their liberty desire very high. England has formed Great Britain and has taken the rest of Ireland, Clan Ricard being the last Irish miner to fall. Iceland? Still Iceland. Haven't done all that much. Taking economic and offensive, you'd think that... I mean, nobody's really going to go after them. The only people that even could being uh, Norway, at least until imperialism comes around. Norway content with uh, seeing the island out of their control. And uh, Iceland content to rest on their laurels, really. England, uh, they did be... Wow. England was the nation to spawn colonialism, and we see that they have colonized Newfoundland, and uh, looking at Nova Scotia as well, one more province colonized in this region, and they will have the colonial nation up in Canada. In the Americas, we do have a war going on over here that is Cheyenne occupied by Cree, Cheyenne at war with only Cree, and Cree at war with Cheyenne Arapaho. So, uh, don't know if that, uh, I should have actually just seen what the war is. That is a Cree humiliation of Cheyenne, just looking for some uh, power projection and monarch points. Tech levels, uh, we have Tech 3, Tech 5 for Creek, Tech 5 for Chickasaw, Tech 5 for Osage, Tech 5 for Shawnee, so it appears that the uh, hmm. Cree are actually on Tech 7. Anybody could look at Huron and just wreck them, like they, they have a, okay. Never mind. Huron's still the leader of a very large federation, but they're on Tech 3, some including uh, 
people in their federation four techs above them. Iroquois on tech five. Anybody else in their federation? Abenaki, Mohican, Ojibwe, and Powhatan. You know, we'll see if these guys manage to actually do some uh, inter-tribe fighting before the English get there, or British. Down in Mexico, we formerly saw Keisha looking pretty strong, and that is no longer the case. Jiu having taken a couple provinces down here, Keisha now split in half by Zapotec, and Itza being spat out from the decaying uh, state that is Quiche. Aztec looking pretty similar to what they do at the beginning, though I believe Huastec has been lost for them. Totonac formerly under Tlaxcala, they are free now and allied with Tarascon. Tarascon normally, uh, formerly had a three-star general, not the case anymore. Tlaxcala now allyless, and uh, they were normally really the, the guy to beat in the region. Well, looks like they were beaten. The mighty, mighty tribe of Caddo continuing to move around. We'd seen them in New Orleans or Chinamacha for a while, but uh, that no longer the case. They have instead moved on to Biloxi. Not quite as good a province, but uh, if you're a tribe, you gotta migrate. At least if you're one of the migratory tribes. People like Huron, Iroquois, Navajo, Pueblo, not so migratory. Is there anybody up in Alaska? The closest is... Chinook and Haida, but uh, nobody up in Alaska proper. The closest, actually, probably Shukshi, who uh, almost, but not quite, share a sea zone with the Aleutian Islands. Ming under attack by Wu, would this be for the Mandate of Heaven? Yep. Good call by Wu there. Ming uh, managing to really sneak the mandate back. Yan was very weak for a while there, their mandate down to zero, and Ming just the one to make it to Beijing first. That's what really won them the mandate back, but not for long. Wu, one of the stronger powers in the region, now Emperor Wu. Well done by them. Chen has really just been the fellow that's been the tributary state of all the emperors. I think Wu will have an easier time of getting tributaries than Yan or Ming did, but, uh, you know, like Qi looking like a very good tributary. Though Qi actually a tributary state of former Emperor Ming. Former could be applied twice there. Lanzhong still with their three provinces, but Lanna continuing to expand and consolidate. Its neighbors in Khmer and Ava safe from their expansion for now, but uh, they do have to watch out for Bengal. Delhi has almost just migrated north out of India. Uh, they've taken Ladakh, Nagri, Kashmir, and Margala. Ladakh actually alive, having been spat out in some war or another. Still rooting for Nagaur. Start as a one-province miner, and have uh, parlayed that starting position into a far better one. Though Afghanistan looking to expand. This war has ended. The rich get richer, the strong get stronger. Persia has taken Baghdad, Sinjar, Araka, Malatya, Sivas, Bozak. Uh, at some point they've taken Moosh from the remnants of Dulkadir, and uh, Syria is still able to hold on to 24,000, so not down and out, but uh, Persia, now actually the third great power, Austria maintaining number one, Castile at number two, but uh, Persia undoubtedly holding on to the most development. Wu, a great power once again after taking the Mandate of Heaven, and the Mamluks back on the list despite having lost territory to Syria. That would be because they integrated Fizan. Checking the timer. I actually have uh, far more time than I expected. Hungary awash in rebels. Pretenders, three stacks. Croatian Separatists. Bulgarian Separatists. By the way, Bulgaria as a tag wiped out after that war with Hungary. Hungary choosing to full annex them, and uh, the Separatists not happy about that. By the way, Wallachia dealing with some Moldavian Separatists. 
uh, Moldavia might be getting its former capital back. Though it, it appears that Moldavia is at war with Odiev, and only Odiev. Uh, Odiev deciding that first conquest of Yedisan, don't need to continue pursuing that, don't need to fight Wallachia. Instead, they'll just go after Moldavia, who has no allies. Early in the game, allied to Muscovy, but that didn't work out for him. Bulgaria out again, no surprise. Uh, the Separatists, really every rebel in Hungary managing to enforce their demands at once, so say hello once again to Croatia, who has emerged, but uh, does not get Dalmatia as Venice has taken that back. Venice with a rough start, they lost their mainland, uh, at least the main mainland Venetia area to Austria very early in the game, but have managed to maintain a hold on Brescia. Have also taken Cremona, have held on to Venice itself, have not lost Istria, and from there have just decided to make their fortunes in the Pel uh, Peloponnese instead. The stalemate has finally been broken. Maria, having had enough of people pushing them around, has kicked Epirus out of Achaea. Epirus just migrating to Corfu instead. I mean, good on them, the tag's surviving, but uh, can't help but wonder how long these little Greek miners will be able to continue playing their games. Kandar really seemed to have gotten lucky. Uh, I had thought that Persia was going to maybe take Trebizond from them. Uh, Trabs and the, Tur uh, the Turkish, but uh, choosing to leave them be. Trebizond, well, I I'm just a Trebizondophile, really. Kasim, you lovely fellow. Allied with Ryazan and eating up the remnants of the failing Crimean Khanate. Ostrakhan being spat out again by those separatists we saw earlier. Crimea, like I've mentioned a, a few times, a stubborn tag, but not stubborn enough this time. Wallachia trying their hand with their Moldavian separatists, that hasn't worked, so uh, perhaps Moldova will be given back to its parent country. Nitra gunning for Hungary yet again. Hungary, of course, utterly destroyed by those rebels. Surprised we haven't seen some Bosnians, actually, or Ragusans. Regardless, Nitra deciding that the Hungarian state a failed one, looking to just supplant them. Hungary's capital has been relocated to Somoji, already occupied by Nitra. Nitra up 63 war score on Hungary-Serbia. Serbia has not been happy with uh, Hungary very often, but has maintained their status as a junior partner there. I don't know if that's kept them independent, but uh, the tag still exists. <laughs> Castile's been very quiet since they knocked out Portugal. Uh, as soon as they hit Admin Tech 10, which uh, probably won't be all that far away, they are quite likely to form Spain. And uh, the Colonial game looking pretty good for them, though. They do have uh, a lot of the coast of southern West Africa, the, the the southern coast of the hump of Africa, and uh, not in the New World yet, though, at least not from what I see. England's still the only European colonizer to have a foothold in the New World. Austria unable to garner any more imperial authority since the Reformation. Again, the Reformation extraordinarily strong this game. Maybe not extraordinarily, but but quite strong. Protestantism uh, really making its mark in North Germany, to say nothing of Scandinavia. And there is the Emperor, Austria retaining the position. Albrecht VI did have an heir, that being Ferdinand I, a far better ruler than his father. No heir for now, but... Uh, the Habsburgs are very good at producing heirs. Nitra finishing up their war with Hungary, taking Sopron Somoji box. And uh, not seeing much of anything else. You'd think with them having such a high war score that they might have uh, finished up taking Toronto as well. Kick Hungary out of, well, Hungary. But uh, Nitra showing some restraint, restraint I suppose. Moldavia has flipped over to, Moldo uh, to Moldavia, and it looks like Moldavia has actually won that war against Odiev, taking Braslav. Lithuania managing to trap its army, 
Unfortunately, Brown under Lithuanian control, but separated from the main portion of Lithuania by the Mazovian province of Volinia and the Odievan province of Zhytomyr. Novgorod's trading city is still around, and they haven't uh, actually fought any other wars with Muscovy. Muscovy at war again. Looks like that's Kiva. Uh, they're fighting Sabir, Uzbek, and Kiva, so that's their stack down there. Uh, would that be another war that is Perm's doing? That would be the Permian Crusade against Sibir. Perm really being, uh, you know, Muscovy is the power in the region, but Perm really being the one to initiate the wars, calling in Muscovy, and not sure if they were promising territory or what, but uh, regardless, Kiva mostly occupied by Perm. Kasim had done well for themselves, but they forgot separatists are a thing. Bunches of Crimean separatists making their presence known in Kasim. They've expanded too far, too fast, and will be feeling the pain. Crimean separatists, uh, two stacks of them for Kasim. Some of them even going over and messing with poor Zaporozhi, who was spat out in one of those wars. Circassia looking stronger than their initial position. Uh, they have not retained control of their usual province of Adige, but have taken Mahar, Terek, and Kunzia. Kunzia generally being Gazakumuk's capital. Gazakumuk's still alive. Uh, they just don't really call attention to themselves, usually. I generally don't even see Gazakumuk get alliances. Uh, every once in a while, they'll finagle an alliance with Tabaristan in the main game, but... Uh, Really, just, just staying alive. Uh, they do have Tarki, which usually starts under the Great Horde. In this game, I just gave them Tarki from the start. But, uh... Actually, no. Sorry. They start out with Kunzia and Tarki. They've taken Dagestan from Shervan. I gave them Tarek at the start, which is now under Circassia. The year is now 1542. Austria is at peace, France has been gone for a while, and uh, looks like Gascony's had enough of being a puppet of Nevers. They've allied Brabant. Brabant's a very strong power in the Low Countries region. Uh, some people actually looking at him for emperorship, though Nevers and Picardy actually alive again. Uh, England has taken back their core on Calais, so they have a foothold on mainland Europe again. Regardless, uh... Really, I'd have thought that Nevers would have uh, lost that easily, but they have the, that alliance with Picardy and uh, have, with the, uh, between the two of them, actually about 18,000 men, and Brabant's hurting for it. They're currently attempting to siege down uh, Antwerp, or uh, perhaps Antorf? That's Breda. Oh, sorry, no, that's Antwerp. I just managed to mouse over... Uh, the province of Breda under Friesland. Friesland looking pretty good, but also at war, fighting against East Frisia, Holstein, Pomerania, and Utrecht. Brandenburg involved in this war? That is negatory. Brandenburg has managed to get a personal union over Ansbach. Ansbach down here. Uh, a bit of a separated union, but a union nonetheless. And Lubick has done very, very well for themselves up here in North Germany, actually uh, managing to halt Brandenburg's expansion a little bit. Pomerania completely surrounded by uh, Brandenburg, but still alive, involved in that war against Friesland, and Brandenburg has seen fit to let them be. Again, Mazovia doing very well for themselves. Allied with Gotland, Poland, Riga, and Brandenburg. So, uh, very few expansion opportunities for them, though uh, the Livonian Order would be a pretty good idea, except they're allied with super strong Nitra. Hungary occupied by Serbia. Serbia finally deciding, you've lost almost all of your lands. They have had enough of being in the Union. They've allied Saruhan. Saruhan, uh, also at war with Bulgaria. They continue to expand, have uh, used their alliance as well. Karaman has been destroyed. They own only Kayseri, 
but Syria has taken Karaman itself, a great province, 29 development. Mentessa has taken Hamid and Konya, and they've made them spit out Germion. There is the timer, it now being the 1st of January, 1544. The great powers, uh, Nitra, Nitra and Gascony, both great powers, displacing the likes of Wu and uh, one other fellow, can't remember who. Regardless, Bengal's still a great power, and uh, Muscovy and Persia also holding on to spots. This has been uh, pretty fun to see from my point of view. Don't know if anybody else is going to watch this or is going to enjoy it, but uh, I hope you're out there, and I hope you do enjoy. Regardless, I've been Paragon Saber. Thank you for watching.